Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Baking Circle live stream. Yes, uh, in which uh, we, uh, international students of the University of Turku, will bake different uh, staples of Finnish cuisine or something that's quite similar to that, and also talk about different things that are part of our experience as live in Tur Turku, which, for example, are studying or some cultural things and some other things that you will see in the future. And the first episode is about studying itself, like um, what the academic year is, what our programs are, and what other parts of the studying at the University of Turku are. And uh, today, uh, I'm here with Helia, who is a student and a master's degree program in neuroscience. Yes, I, neuroscience. yes I forgot the whole name, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, with Esther, uh, who is a master's degree student in uh, information communication and, uh, technology? technology yeah. yeah, and cybersecurity trap. Yes, exactly. And my name is Dmitri. I'm a master's degree student uh, in food development. And today we will be making the Potupula, which is kind of the name, uh, which technically means the potato buns, because they are made with the potato, mashed potatoes in the dough, and with uh, curry jam. And uh, the reason that we are baking this thing today is because uh, the recipe was created by my team in one of the courses last semester in, in autumn as a part of the course in food development. So yeah, that's technically it. And uh, we'll start with uh, preparing the dough for which we will need yeast, sugar, and uh, hot water, which should be for my yeast around 42 degrees, but it really depends on what yeast you use. And if you use instant yeast, you can immediately add them to your dough. But yeah, for my dry yeast, I use hot water and uh, mix it with yeast and sugar and put it for 10 minutes in a warm place, which will, will be a uh, hot bath, uh, which is my sink. <laughs> yes. Okay, for those of you joining us here today, welcome and give us a shout out in the live chat where you're from. And you can also direct your questions there and we will try to answer them as best as we can. But as Dimitri mentioned earlier, we're gonna talk about studying here. Um, so I'm from the Human Neuroscience Program and I'm in my second year currently. Esther is in her first year. And um, so the Human Neuroscience Program has a lot of different things. All of our programs are two year degree programs and they're all taught in English. Um, a little bit about the structure of the Human Neuroscience Program. We have our courses divided into different modules. So we have a behavioral neuroscience module, we have a clinical neuroscience module, we also have a data analysis module, and also a neuroimaging module. And you can check that out at utu.b slash degrees, where you have a full list of all your degree programs. Esther, what is your program like? Okay, so like Dimitri earlier mentioned, I study information and communication technology, cybersecurity track, and essentially, Cybersecurity is about protecting your data and systems and the um, connections that you use every day. The course is quite broad because there are different aspects of it. So there are aspects in like pen testing, ethical hacking, data analysis, and in Utsu here, we have those different aspects as courses that you can study for you to specializing when you're ready to work. Yeah. Uh, so my course is, uh, I would say, split into two parts. And I'll get to that in, in a minute, <laughs> because I'll start making the jam, uh, for which we will use the blended uh, carrots. I also added a little bit of potato to make the jam smoother, and also because the original recipe called for it as well. But you can just use carrots if you want. Uh, to which we will add. Uh, jam sugar, which is technically just sugar mixed with pectin. And if you don't have such a thing in your, at your place, in your home, then you can probably use agar agar, but I'm not sure 100% that it will work really good. But yeah, about my program, uh, the food development program at the University of Turku is, I would say, split into two parts because uh, there is around half of the courses that are more uh, scientific, which uh, focus more on different um, applications of different technolo technologies, different equipment, like mass spectrometry, 
some people might know it, uh, and uh, for example, food chemistry and things like that. So it's a more fundamental part of the course. And the other part of the course, uh, not the course, but the whole program is a more uh, applied because in those in this part. We, fo we focus more on different projects, so we focus more on how things can actually be done in the industry, for example, or how they, yes, done in practice, for example, the food development course in which we needed to actually create a recipe and uh, have a full cycle of Product, product development and uh, for example the course which will start this spring in my in my program is industrial micro microbiological fermentation or micro microbial fermentation which also focuses more on applied aspects of, of food development and food industry yes that's very cool so there's a diverse programs here uh, there's so many programs and you can go check them out at utu.c slash degrees to see the details and also yeah. how the programs are structured. But I'm going to talk a little bit about how the academic year here is at is at Apple. So the, as I said, um, all the master's degree programs are roughly two years um, and you can extend them if you'd like, but everyone usually finishes within the two years. And it's usually divided, depending on the program, first years with all your mandatory courses and the second year focused on your thesis. That again depends on the program. For example, my program in human neuroscience, we have our mandatory courses spread out between the first, second, and third semester, and then we 100% focus on the thesis in our last semester. Um, but the way that the academic year here is arranged at UTU is that it's divided as usual per the two semesters, but um, the trick is that it's also divided into two periods, so this may not be familiar for some of you, and, and a period is basically half of the semester. So for example, you have the fall semester, which runs usually from September until December, depending again on the faculty. I think our faculties in technology and medicine actually already start in August, so then again, that's also very faculty specific. And then one period can usually last between six to eight weeks, so the first period or the fall period would be from September until sometime around mid-October, and then you will have an exam week for about a week, and then after that, it's divided into the second period, which is from the mid of October until sometime mid-December, which again, you will have a exam week and then usually a Christmas break. But you can also do your exams over Christmas. And um, Esther will explain a little bit about assessments later on. And then you have your next third and fourth period, which is done in the spring semester, which starts in January until the end of July. But usually teaching ends about May or the beginning of June. Now, Esther, could you explain a little bit about the different assessments here that you can do in the master's degree programs? Okay, so for um, assessments here in University of Turku, we have different ways to be assessed for you to get your grades. So the common method that most of us should probably know is the method of written exams. But here at UTU, you can have written exams or just practical work mm -hmm. or electronic exams as well. And then I discovered learning diaries when I came here. So it's essentially you writing a journal of everything that you learned and studied during the entire period of a particular course. Now for each course, the requirements are different. Some courses require you to write, you know, about 20 to 25 pages. Some courses require 10 to 15 pages. Some courses do not want you to have like diagrams in the learning journals, while some would prefer that you do. But the common thing about all the learning diaries is that you must have references, scientific references. And um, usually it's always best at the beginning of a course to confirm from your lecturer how they want the learning diary to be so that you can get the maximum grade that you worked for. Yeah, I can add my own experience as well. So uh, in my previous background, which is degree in microbiology in Belarus, because I come from Belarusian State University, uh, the most common form was also either a written or oral exam. And usually actually the uh, most common form was oral exam, an oral exam, and here I really like it that the ass assessment types are really diverse even within my own program because I think I've had uh, yeah, written exams, electronic exams, learning diaries, 
project work for which you just need to finish some kind of project and make a project report for it. And technically, you're assessed during the whole uh, work of your team when you're working on the project. And uh, yeah, I think that it's really interesting because for some courses, it's more relevant to have some other type of assessment than uh, usual exam. Because for example, some courses which I have, which one of which is food safety and legislation, for example, involves a large corpus of legislation and legal texts, which you could not really, and there is no reason to memorize. But uh, the most important part is that you learn how to navigate in this corpus and you learn how to find the necessary information for yourself, which is actually developed when you write a learning diary. And the thing of what I like, the part that I like about learning diaries is also that um, you can do that in your own, at your own pace, independently, and uh, this can be stressful, less stressful for people uh, who are usually stressed about different exams that come into in, in their in their uh, studies. But uh, speaking about exams, it's interesting that, at least to my knowledge, it feels like a lot of people at the Faculty of Technology have learning diaries yeah. because <laughs> none of our courses have those. We usually do e exams. Um, Esther mentioned earlier about electronic exams. So here at Utu, you have designated computer spaces where you can do your exam electronically. And one of the great things about studying here in Finland and also at Utu is that you can get three chances to do an exam, which is really shocking for me mm. because all the different... I came from, I'm from Indonesia, and I did my higher education a bit in Indonesia and also a bit more in the UK, and we didn't have those type of things. We did good old-fashioned kind of written exams, uh, and you only had that one chance where you could do the exam. Whereas here in Finland, you have three chances within specific periods. So sometimes you, as I mentioned earlier, you have the exam week, but you don't necessarily have to do your exam then if you're not ready. So that flexibility is, I think, a really cool thing about here studying yeah. in Finland, and also you can book it whenever you want. Yeah. If you're a night owl, you can still book. I think the latest that you can book an exam is about 9 p.m. Yeah. So the exam room is open until 11 p.m. So yeah. you can study the whole day and then take the exam at night. Yeah. You can even do it on the weekend yeah. if you want. But of course, we focus on good work-life balance here in Finland, so I don't recommend that. <laughs> yeah. <And> uh, <laughs> I try not to do that. Well. But yes, so Dimitri, do you want to show us the next step? Yes, uh, so the yeast should be ready now and uh, what we do next is just we mix it with uh, the mashed potato uh, in this bowl with uh, some sugar uh, and with some vegetable oil. I use rapeseed oil, but you can use other types like sunflower oil and some others. Probably yeah, not extra virgin olive oil, but yeah, something that's usually used for uh, frying. Yeah, that can be good. So tasteless oil. Yeah, tasteless. Yeah, that's a good description. But yeah, uh, I think I really like electronic exams because uh, I managed to move one of my exams, I think, six or five times because <laughs> all the time I was I had something else coming uh, in my studies and I thought that, yes, I still have one month to take the exam and I had this window of opportunities, so I felt quite secure and safe in moving that. And I think it's a really good thing that uh, there is this kind of flexibility provided for the students. Yeah, and if you're, like me, a very anxious person, sometimes I don't really know what to expect in the exam, and you can always take the first chance to kind of see what the exam is like and get yourself used to it so that you can be more focused on what you study. So I think in that sense it's really nice that everything is quite broad, but you can also specifically focus on what you want to study. That's the same with, for example, PSPs. So we have personal study plans mm -hmm. in which every course has an allocated amount of electives, um, some a bit more than others. I have 18 credits, um, how much do you? Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's around 45, 40 to 45 in total. Oh, okay, that's yeah. a lot. And Be yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Esther? So for my department, we have uh, 20 to 25 elective courses and then another set of 20 to 25 thermal courses. So essentially like 40 to 45. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. So in uh, our master's degree programs, you have 120 credits, which you have to do to complete the programs. Um, and then you can also take um, minors. I think minors are somewhere between 20 to 25 credits of a specific set of group of subjects, which you would want to specialize in. So just because you take one track or one program doesn't mean that you have to 
do 100% that program. A lot of us have taken other things outside of our degrees. I've taken language courses. Re yes. Really recommend the Finnish language courses. Um, I'm also taking a philosophy courses later on during the semester. So you can really personalize your study plan according to your own interests, which I think is a great thing here about studying in Finland. You also have the open university, which basically means you can take courses from whatever university here in Finland. I, I have fed friends who've taken um, courses from Helsinki or courses from other hmm. um, universities. So it's really versatile and it's really nice. Yeah. And speaking about courses, um, what are your favorite ones so far? Okay. Uh, we can think for it. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll just uh, add flour to the mix and uh, knead it so that it's homogeneous. And after that, I cover it with a towel and uh, it should rise and should be put into a warm place for about an hour or until it doubles in size. Yeah. I have a quick question about the recipe. Here in Finland you can find all different kinds of potatoes. In Indonesia you only really have big or small potatoes. Mm -hmm. That's the only differentiation. So what kind of potatoes do you recommend using? To be fair, I tried two types. I think I tried general ones and uh, all-purpose. I think it's called all-purpose potatoes or something. And I also tried some more harder ones, yeah, uh, that are usually, I think, for salads or something. But uh, I didn't really notice that much of a difference between them. So I, I think that any type would go, yeah. That's great. Okay, so my favorite courses so far has been um, systems and application security. Um, Really, that was more dependent on the lecturer because, well, he did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was quite a number of practicals in it. I don't really enjoy theoretical things because I worked for a while before coming to do my master's. So the mm. fact that I could, you know, do practical lab work with the course was very interesting. And also ethical hacking. It has been interesting, a little bit stressful, but interesting nonetheless because it's purely practical. You are just trying to, you know, get into systems and find out their vulnerabilities and how you can exploit them. So those have been my favorite courses so far. What about you? Well, I am a sucker for neuroimaging, so <laughs> <laughs> those are my favorite courses. I also did my undergrad in psychology, where I also started with neuroimaging. And so um, they have a really good kind of practical sense. So they actually teach you about all the different softwares that you can use, all the different modalities that you can do. So it's quite detailed um, and very covering like a lot. So neuroscience has many different methodologies and it really depends on what you want to do and so the focus of our program is human neuroscience and you can't really do things like single cell recording in humans it's not ethical you can't stick you know something in directly into someone's brain <laughs> none of us are surgeons so um, mm -hmm. we really have a lot of uh, non-invasive uh, methods which we learn in the neuroimaging module which is really really cool mm -hmm. Like EEG or? Yeah, like EEG, um, PET, and then also TMS and mm -hmm. uh, fMRI and the different types of MRI mm. modalities. Nice. Yeah. But yes, um, so I'm a second year, so I've been here quite a, a while, so I don't really remember how I started everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bit of a fuzzy memory, some stress, a little bit, a lot of fun, and also like a good amount of resting as well. So you guys are both first years. Yeah. Tell yeah. me a little bit about how you started the year. Uh, I can go and uh, by the way um, the jam is kind of ready I mean it's mid ready because uh, what you needed to do and what I needed to do is to make it simmer uh, like just yeah put it into low medium heat and simmer it for a while and just after that add cardamom and lemon juice and just mix it together and technically that's it yeah it's ready but about my start of the year uh, it was a lot, <laughs> both in oops, in good and uh, in a bad sense, but not like bad, bad, just a bit mm, stressful, I would say, yeah. But in good sense, because yes, it was something new and a lot of new courses, a lot of new people and uh, excitement about the new program. But uh, I would say that stress was about the uh, freedom as well a little bit, because uh, my program is one of the programs that have that has quite a lot of uh, a lot of elective 
courses and uh, this kind of uh, minor module, which is technically a set of four to five courses that you can choose and that are united by the common th theme. And uh, at the beginning of my studies, I needed to actually choose all of these courses. I needed to check the schedules, check that th those things do not overlap. And if they overlapped to understand, can I actually sacrifice one of the course, uh, one of the courses to for another one? And uh, yeah, so that was the stressful thing, but it was also really good because, uh, yeah, just I liked how we jumped into this studying and also I like the orientation week as well because it's uh, for someone who doesn't know the place very much, it explains quite well what's at the university uh, because I, for example, I did my exchange studies here four years ago, so I kind of knew the place, but uh, for someone who just comes uh, comes abroad uh, to study for the first time, it might be really relevant. Yeah, but how was yours? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> the, be <laughs> the beginning of my studies was quite difficult because, first of all, it was my first time traveling abroad mm. and, you know, trying to get my place set up and all of that. Thank God for TYS, that, is, that was very helpful in getting an apartment before coming to Finland. But furnish, furnishing the, uh, the apartment was a different case entirely. So my very first night was spent sleeping on the cold hard floor. And then I had to get information about where to get furniture to, you know, put in my place. And that was, you know a little bit difficult mm. and then also I remember trying to get my personal identity code with DVV and um, luckily I was able to um, pick a date for my appointment way before I came to Finland so it was about a week after I came that I had my appointment and then after then I was able to go for my police identity card as well which I needed to open a bank account. <laughs> so all of that stress and then trying to set up my personal study plan and start the entire semester was, you know, a little bit stressful. But, well, it was all good at the end of it. And um, I think the interesting part of the beginning of the semester for me was the orientation program. That was the first time I was physically meeting Hillier mm. and I was like oh this girl's gonna be my friend <laughs> <laughs> that is right. the case today so the beginning of a semester when you're just coming can be a little bit stressful but don't be bothered about that because well you'll get over it and you get to enjoy the country and your studies yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you who have applied at UTU and are probably waiting for an announcement don't worry there will be tutors who will be helping you online and you can ask them all different sorts of questions I was a tutor myself last year and we had a telegram group chat and it was full you had 400 messages every <laughs> single day and people just discussing first timers abroad and yeah. people who've never lived in the Nordics before yeah. what do you wear during winter where can you get different furniture all of that will be handled also by the different webinars that mm -hmm. the admission services will provide so don't worry about it there will be plenty of information yeah. just attend the webinars ask questions and don't be afraid to you know there are no such thing as stupid questions just make sure that you follow everything and there are steps um, I mean I think Finnish government websites are one of the most kind of yes. better ones in yes. my opinion yes. and you Compared can find to some others. Yeah, <laughs> you can find all sorts of information there and um, a majority of them especially for the ones related for foreign of course are in English and yeah. um, that's another thing actually um, I didn't know that you could get away with just ha speaking English here in Finland mm. which is really fun of course it's like polite and it's also fun to learn Finnish um, not going well for myself <laughs> I'm not going to lie <laughs> I haven't had time to I guess I didn't get enough pressure because you can survive in yeah. Finland without yeah. uh, being able to speak Finnish but uh, <laughs> how about you I know you're you're studying a lot of Finnish yeah, right now yeah. I I would say that I just love studying languages as well. And if I didn't uh, if I didn't uh, have this passion for cooking or baking and or everything related with to food, I would just study languages probably. And for that reason, I I started uh, learning Finnish quite early on because I 
when I did my exchange studies, I started back then, four years ago. But of course, then I had a break of three, I think, uh, years because I wasn't really planning to go here at that moment. But then when I actually applied and when I learned that, yes, I got into the university, I understood that, yeah, I, I would like to uh, brush up on my uh, finish and to uh, also start learning a bit more before I actually come to the university so that I can uh, start at the uni a bit from the higher higher level and higher step. So yeah, I think it's going well. <laughs> it's not easy, of course, because it's not the easiest language, but um, I would say that there is a lot of logic and uh, there is also sometimes not a lot of logic because <laughs> just like in any other language, there, there are uh, different ex um, exceptions, but university does a really good job at providing the services and the courses to, for those who want to study the language because I, as far as I remember, there are six courses uh, from Finnish Beginners 1 to Finnish Continuation 4. There are also intensive uh, courses, there are also survival courses, but th those are really f for those who come uh, as exchange students. Also, there are some activities that are not really courses, uh, for example, language circles, where you can, in informal environments, learn language just by chatting with people and communicating or doing some, something uh, funny, like going to a movie or something like that and trying to watch it with subtitles. Or there are also such a thing as uh, language uh, culture and language partner uh, tandem, uh, which I actually have. So in that uh, thing, uh, there is a couple of people, one of which helps uh, learn you Finnish, and you will help another person if your language, if you're native of, if in one of the languages that are taught at the university, you will help that person learn your language. So that's also a really good thing because, for example, after this today, I will come home and uh, uh, my language uh, tandem partner will come to my place and we'll do some stuff together. So yeah, it's a really good thing. And uh, I would say that the, uh, teachers at the university also um, offer things that might not be in the university itself, but uh, if they notice that someone wants to learn more, they will offer some things beyond the university, which is also really good and also really, uh, I would say, encouraging and supporting. Yeah, but uh, I'll get back to baking. And to save our and your time, uh, we pre-made some things beforehand, beforehand because uh, we would like to keep it in, an hour, in about an hour. Uh, and the dough would have to rise for the whole hour. So we have a batch of dough that's ready now, and also we have jam that's uh, also ready and cooled. So I'll get the dough, and Hilly, if you could yeah, get me the uh, bowl with the jam, please. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have a submitted question. What surprised you the most in the studies when you started your studies in Finland? Okay, so for me, I think I would say it was the ability to sort of have my own personal study program where I was able to plan how I wanted my studies to be. I chose the courses I wanted to study in a particular period for a particular semester. In my country where I'm coming from, Niger where I come from Ni in Nigeria, you just, everything is already set for you. You don't really have a choice in how it goes. So having that choice was, I think, the thing that surprised me the most. What about you, Helia? Well, I'm not going to lie. The weirdest thing for me here was book exams. I have <laughs> never heard of them before. Oh, uh, <laughs> and basically, a book exam is where you study a course based on a book. So you read the book, and you're tested your knowledge on that book. Um, they're not my favorite courses, but for those of you who like to independently read things and also get credits for courses and kind of have a university saying you're good at this thing, um, then that may suit you. I personally like the aspect of getting taught by um, mm -hmm. a professor and being able to ask about different kinds of questions. Um, and so I'm not the biggest fan of book exams, but that also was for me very weird. So I did sign up to a course before and I thought it was really interesting, but then it turns out it was a book exam and I was like, huh, 
Okay, <laughs> interesting. So right. let's try to figure it out. Mm. Um, and I guess, yeah, I, I really like the fact that we had the personal study plans and we could do whatever we wanted, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, I was thinking even maybe I'd take some business courses. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I haven't got time for that. <laughs> um, and yeah, so for me, that was one of the weirdest things, book exams. How about you, Dimitri? Yeah, uh, first I'll explain what I've been doing right now. So I just took the dough and uh, put it into the dusted uh, into the dusted surface that's into the surface that's dusted with flour, and uh, I tried to roll it into something that resembles a rectangle. Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain what are the measurements. I would say it's like 30 to 70, 30 by 80 centimeters, I guess. And uh, yeah, if it's a bit weirdly shape, shaped, you can just trim it. And don't throw away the trims. You can just bake them and eat them as well. Don't waste food. So yeah, and then I spread the jam all over it, just yeah, evenly, and that's it. Could you show us the consistency of the jam and what it's oh, supposed yeah. to look like? Yeah, if you want to look at it, yeah, I would. I, yeah, it's not jelly. Maybe it's a bit m thicker than usual jam, but still it's like spreadable and yeah. Uh, yes. Something that can be used in the dough. But yeah, about my favorite thing, uh, that was the question, right? The weirdest thing that ah, you found here, yeah. Hmm. About learning here. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I, th I think probably retaking an exam was quite weird for me because, yeah, just as you mentioned before, uh, it's not a real thing uh, in my country, for example. I mean, you can retake it, but only if you did really badly. <laughs> so uh, if you did, uh, if you passed, then it's not usually an option for you. In really uh, exceptional cases, it's, uh, it's available. But yeah, I think that's one of the things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, another thing I guess that you could say about the Finnish learning system is that you have to be very independent. I think Dimitri mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So it really depends on you how well you're going to do, how much you actually learn while you're at university. It is all dependent on you, which, may be, which may be liberating for some people, but also like... Um, scary for others yeah. and I, th I feel like at least with a lot of the first years that I talked with their one of their primary concerns is how do you pick courses and it's really just going through what the available courses are yeah. you can go through the study guide online um, if you go to the utu.fi slash degrees and look at the program that you're interested in there should be a link of also the study guide down there and then you can explore through the different um, study guides whether it's in a different faculty and the same faculty what I like to do is go through the study guides of courses that are similar to mine. So we also have, for example, biomedical imaging um, and uh, what was the other course? Yes, drug development and discovery. So things kind of biologically related that mm. are in biomedical sciences. And then I see what exactly do they have in their um, study programs. And I might be interested in some of those. So I did take, for example, practical training in in vivo images. And we worked with animals. I had never worked with animals before. I also took like an animal lab course for that. Um, and so that was also very interesting. So it really depends on what you want to do or if you're just going to explore, then have a look or have a chat with your friends. What are the different kinds of um, emerging fee um, topics within your mm -hmm. field? Um, and you can also talk about it with professors. For example, yeah. in human neuroscience, you can go from doing medical studies with humans or drug studies and you can also work with animals or with humans or just with cells i personally prefer to work with humans i've never worked with cells before and i would like to try it sometime um but yeah it's just really just exploring and being quite scientific about it it, it helps you really focus on what you want to do in the future so yes but how do you guys find the curriculum here in finland do you think compared to your previous experiences? Uh, yes, I think, or do you want to go first? No, go first. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I, I can go. Sure. Oh, okay, yeah, I, th I thought <laughs> you could, okay, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say that, uh, Yes, it's mu there is much more freedom because um, just as uh, in Ethers, uh, I think you said it before, uh, that in your experience, in your previous like background, in your education, everything was really preset. Yeah. So it was uh, the same in my case. I think we could choose only one, well, maybe not one, but two to four courses over five years. <laughs> so yeah, here is just an explosion. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, uh, it's uh, something that I really like. But yeah, it also can be quite difficult because you need to actually think what's more the most interesting for you, what are your aims, and what uh, maybe yes, what's the emerging field, emerging topic in your industry, or something what you want to do later, or what uh, additional set of skills you would want to have besides your major degree. So yeah, I think the curriculum is great in the terms that you can technically choose anything. For example, in my minor module, because my program has a minor module, uh, as I said before, and also, by the way, you can, uh, in the degrees, degree pages, you can also check whether your uh, yeah, whether whether your program has a minor minor module or does not, because uh, yours does not have it, as far as I understood. No, just electives. We, we don't have enough elective space mm -hmm. to actually mm, do a minor, and most of us are interested in neuroscience itself. So yeah. not a lot of us. I I don't know any of my classmates who do do a minor, but you can do it. You don't have to be stuck to the one hundred twenty mm -hmm. credits. Yeah, you can do way more if yeah, you want. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, so in my minor module, which is sustainable studies, I, I'm taking a course in uh, the spring, uh, which is about nature and tourism and like sustainable tourism, which is really interesting also because it's going to be taught at the Botanical Garden in Turku. So yeah, it, my, like early May, Botanical Garden from 9 to 12, studying uh, tourism and nature. So yeah, I think that's a really good thing that you can actually choose something that you're interested in, which might not be totally connected to your program, but might be something additional. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but Esther, yeah, what, what about yeah. you? Okay, so for me, in cybersecurity, there are so many different aspects of cybersecurity that you can, you know, focus on and, you know, be very skilled at. So where I'm coming from in school, you, like I said before, everything is preset and you have to study everything. So I come from a computer engineering background, but I still have to learn things in electrical engineering and um, information and communication technology, even though all I wanted to do was study computer engineering. <laughs> so here at uh, University of Turku, you have the opportunity to, you know, go through everything while still focusing on the things that you want. So we have some courses like game development. If you're interested in doing something like that, you mm -hmm. can study it. If you want to focus on um, software engineering, there's something like that available for you to do. If you want to, you know, be a pen tester, like I said before, there's ethical hacking for you to do. So there are so many different aspects and courses that you can focus on and develop yourself for, for eventually when you start working. So that was very enlightening. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what I did with the dough was that I uh, rolled it into a log and just cut it into around two, uh, 10 to 13 pieces and placed them like as these like rolls, like this, this side down or up, whatever, because the sides are uh, the same. And uh, first we'll just put them uh, for an additional rice just for five minutes, and then we'll bake them in a preheated oven that's preheated uh, to 200 degrees, and we'll bake it for uh, around 10 to 12 minutes, I think. Yeah. yeah. And the raising is usually done just in some slightly warm place, not like anything higher than 50 degrees. So yeah, that's, that will be the first step. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, so you okay. need to raise it first. Ouch. Yeah, wrong side. Yeah, just just for a tiny bit. It's not something extremely necessary. I hope you don't see the screeching. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not uh, entirely necessary because there will be an additional rise when the dough will start baking. Like in the first tops, uh, steps of baking, it also will rise a bit. So it, it's just five minutes. It, it should be should be should be good. Yeah, and also cover it a bit. Okay, so. You know, we've been talking about studies and all those serious stuff. There is also fun at the university. There are different um, student unions and um, communities that you can join. I particularly am not in any, but <laughs> I am a very committed gym member. I use the <laughs> campus sport because, well, 
even though my family members believe that I don't need to work out mm. because of my size, <laughs> I still think it's good to keep fit. So is there any student union that you're a part of or any organization? Yeah, I think I'm in a few maybe. Yeah, what about? Yeah, but uh, we'll discover that more in the next episode, which will be in spring. But yeah, just for now, yeah, I'm in a few organizations and there are a lot of them in Turku, but you'll learn it more in spring. And But about the things that you can do, I mean, the kind of facilities that the university also provides is uh, really something that I appreciate a lot. I'm, I'm not sure that uh, the gym is actually the university, but it's just, I think it's uh, just for different stu students like of the whole city. like a partnership, I think, yeah. because you do get a student yeah. discount for the gym membership. Um, but speaking back to organizations, I am one of those boring people who don't really do the fun stuff. Um, I focus a lot on my studies. Yeah. Um, and one of the organizations I'm doing is uh, in an educational committee. So we actually form that ourselves. I mentioned earlier that you can talk to professors about your future future plans and that's one of the things I wanted to highlight that here in Finland and at Utu especially that professors are very open um, where I'm from there's this really strong hierarchy between students and teachers teachers are above us Same. and students have to follow what mm -hmm. the teachers say if a, um, if a teacher wants to meet at 8 p.m. then you meet at 8 p.m. you don't really s you, you don't really say I'm sorry that time doesn't work for me you don't you just you have to change shift everything to follow the professor's kind of schedule. So that's one thing I wanted to highlight about being here is that you feel kind of respected and you're treated like a junior colleague. So you're actually part yeah. of the university and not you're not just like some lowly student who yeah. like needs to follow whatever the professors say. Um, and so because of that, we uh, created something called an educational committee. We weren't happy about some of the things in our um, program. And of course, our program is relatively new. So um, there were still a lot of things that needed figuring out. But the great thing about it is they actually did listen to us mm -hmm. um, and they even invited us to help um, and give feedback back on the new curriculum that they make. So here the curriculum at Utu changes every two years. You guys are using the same curriculum for, um, from the 2022 to 2024. But if you're in kind of like an odd year like I am, you might change curriculums in between. Um, so I initially started with the 2020 until 2022 curriculum. And then in my second year, I'm slightly shifting and using the 2022 to 2024 curriculum. So I think if, if you're interested in the curriculum, that's how things are here in Finland. But yeah, as I was saying, they invited us to give us feedback on the curriculum and we gave them a lot of feedback and they actually did listen to us. Yeah. And I think uh, so far, speaking to the first years, um, it's been kind of organized better and it's much it's much kind of nicer and more coherent so that's a nice thing also about Finland is that if you have something that you want to complain about or you're not satisfied about the first thing that you can do is go directly to your professor and that may be kind of like a culture shock or a cultural difference with other people mm -hmm. you, you don't really do that in Indonesia <laughs> I mean you can and you you have your very nice professors who are open to mm -hmm. whatever feedback but then you also have the high and mighty professors not saying that Finland doesn't have those but majority still kind of are, are open to feedback. So that's a nice thing. Yeah. What are your experiences in your program? Yeah, I'd say the same, that uh, the great thing is that people listen here. I mean, the university people listen to you. And uh, I would say that most of the courses that I have have a feedback session after that. I mean, the feedback, not this meaning, but yeah, at least something written, a written form is 80% chance uh, asked from you after the course is completed. And uh, I think that's really relevant. Of course, at, that, at this moment, I cannot say whether the feedback is uh, taken into account, but from your experience, I can say that yes, people listen to that. And do not just ask for, for your feedback, but also actually uh, address it and do something with your feedback and uh, try to improve uh, uh, according with what you've said. But yeah, about the facilities, I really want to touch on this topic because I love the libraries here, the university libraries, because in my country, uh, the university library is not really something where you study. It's just a place where you get books, <laughs> uh, go for a semester, never go there during half a year and just get back there to just, yeah, yeah, check, check, check the book, yeah, check the books out. And uh, I really love that there are a lot of places and spaces here where you can actually study the libraries because I think the network is 
around six, seven different libraries, and uh, they are really great. They are re really neatly designed, I would say. They also have uh, rooms that you can just book for your team or for yourself and study there as a group of four people. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, up to up to ten. Yeah, yeah, and there are also sometimes uh, things like screens and uh, additional communications that you can uh, attach, yeah, plug into plug to your laptop or something, and to yeah, just to make the whole meeting more pleasant. So it's really great, and uh, I'll just uh, take the buns out and put them into the oven to bake now, and we will hopefully get something in the in the end. I'll do Yay. it like that. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we have another question from the chat. the chat. Says, how do you take care of your mental health, resilience during studies? Have you found the studies hard? Yeah. I think <laughs> Helia should go first because my answer is a little bit shocking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I come from a psychology background, so I take my mental health very seriously. Um, the studies were hard. They are, it is a master's degree program, so I did expect quite a bit of a challenge. And um, some studies were better than others, and some studies were academically challenged. Uh, if you know the meme that you choose an academically challenging degree, and then you get academically challenged. <laughs> um, <laughs> but overall, it was really nice uh, because I have great classmates, and we all just um, have we enjoy together and we also suffer together. So that's a nice thing if you can build like a good network and which is also what I appreciate being ambassadors here um, with Esther and Dimitri. Um, and how do I take care of it? Well, uh, here in Finland, there's a thing where you don't really work on the weekends. And uh, if you can, I know several of my friends who treat studying like work. So you'll do an eight hour and then after that, that's it. Um, and that's the end. And I think that's a very good way of uh, taking care of your mental health to make sure that you do the studying during the time that you allocate and then you don't think about it afterwards. So that's a really good, healthy way of also not guilt tripping yourself when mm. you're resting, especially when you're resting and you're trying to be like, okay, I actually needed to study in this. So I don't have as good boundaries with my studies. Um, and sometimes I do do that, uh, but other times I do study still study on the weekends but that's also because I just I I do genuinely love my course and and my um my degree so neuroscience or my field more specifically so I will just if I have a question pop up in my mind I will go read a research paper things like that so it really depends on how you look at your degree um you can treat it as a job if you want and you do enjoy life on other days on the weekends or um, if you're weird like me and like STEM and <laughs> like <laughs> science, um, then you can treat it not as a job. Uh, but I guess the most important thing is you set boundaries and you make sure that you mm -hmm. actually take time to socialize and um, to go out. Finnish nature is very beautiful. I love where we live. We all live kind of in mm -hmm. the same neighborhood. Yeah, it's, it's true. amazing. Um, there's like a, a, a not a jungle, um, <laughs> a forest, <laughs> sorry, a forest okay. right behind our uh, our houses yeah. so we can just go and yeah, walk. And this yeah. morning it was so pretty because it's so covered in snow and there's a lot of sun right now. So you'll look at the, like, the it looks like little pearls, which is what mm. Helmiku is, fun fact, <laughs> in February is in Finnish. But yes, that's, that's my answer, setting boundaries and mm. um, doing things that encourage and help your mental health, like going to the gym, my sister does. Mm. I don't do that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so for me, huh? <laughs> Before this session actually started, I was telling Hilia that I had had a very hectic week. Oh. So what I do to take care of my mental health when I'm stressed from school is that I rant. And for you to be <laughs> able to do that, you need to have good network of friends. Yeah, yeah. So Support, I have yeah. people that just listen to me. I literally just say, sit down, I want to talk. And then I can just go on ranting for 30, 45 minutes. And when I'm done, I feel so relaxed. <laughs> and then I can continue my work again. And then at times, I just sit down and watch movies. And I get relaxation from that. It, it does wonders to my soul. <laughs> just, you know, just looking at movies, not thinking, not having to stress my brain to understand anything, mm -hmm. just being entertained. That really relaxes me a lot. And 
most of the time it works <laughs> oh it works all the time <laughs> <laughs> right. And then most of the time when I realize that there's no time for me to do either of those, mm. I just keep pushing and I tell myself it's for a little while. It mm. will soon be over. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. it's not true because you know, <laughs> the week seems longer than it should be, but eventually it comes to an end and yeah. I get to rest. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, about myself, I would say that it's something that both of you <laughs> said as well. Yeah, because I think it's mostly the yeah, strategy to cope with the stress and with the yeah, dif difficulties that come with studying. Because for me, the network of, fr of friends is really important because I really um, relax, yeah, I become really relaxed when I'm around people. I really like to be around people, though I'm quite comfortable being alone as well. But when I feel stressed or when I feel that, yes, I'm uh, there's been quite a, a lot of happening uh, in my studies, for example, or yeah, I'm tired or something like that. I really benefit from talking to someone or and to just and from just I don't know sitting over a cup of tea or over a board game or over a movie because sometimes I go for a movie night with my friends, for example. So things like that. But yes, another part is. Uh, uh, Yes, trying to set the boundaries would be good, but uh, I really like the, what I'm doing as well, just as Helia, so uh, I can do it at any time. Well, not at, during the middle of the night, of course, in the middle of the night, but uh, yeah, like in the evening, on the weekend, it's quite natural for me to do something related to my studies. But I would also say that it's important to organize yourself and to organize your schedule, uh, or organize my schedule, if I'm talking about myself, because uh, if I think of ha ahead of what assignments I have in the future, because it's possible to know what assignments you will have in a week, or not in a week, but even in a month. So if I know that and I start doing those things little by little from the very beginning, I won't have that much stress closer to the end because I will have uh, some, yeah, something divided, some tasks divided over this period and I won't have to stress that much towards the end. So yeah, I would say that. But also, if you think that, uh, if someone thinks that they really need help, there are also different facilities at the university, as far as I remember, like uh, studying psychologists, and uh, as far as I remember, there's also a community called uh, On My Mind or something? Yes, yes. there's the On My Mind project yeah. where you can um, kind of apply to get peer support, so yes. you'll have people who are also students, and you can just talk to them yeah. about your different worries. Um, there's also support from the Student Health Service if you really need professional help, for example. I have gotten that before in the past, and um, there is quite a waiting list, but there is support available. Yeah. So reach out to whoever you yeah. need to, whether it's your friends or um, maybe your professors, and just communicate that if you are struggling. Yeah. Uh, but there is a question from the chat. Is it easy to change majors? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure about maybe it's possible between different tracks, mm. but I don't think you can do that between mm. programs. Yeah, what Do you know of anyone who's changed tracks in your mm, program? No, not, me. Mm, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, because different programs had different admission criteria. Yeah, exactly. So I think, yeah, yes. I would think that it's not that easy, but I, probably the tracks would be something possible. But yeah, I, we can't say for sure because yeah, we ha I don't, haven't experienced that. Yes. Yeah. So don't know that yet. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about that for a bit uh, and also mental health, which <laughs> is great. I had one other topic that I wanted to talk about, which is an, a huge part of studies, is your master's thesis. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the, the flower. <laughs> So I'm currently doing my master's thesis, hopefully finishing it soon. Um, but also, uh, I guess it differs again on programs, how soon you start a master's thesis. Yeah. So for example, in human neuroscience, we start quite early. Um, I think we are already advised to try to start looking for a lab as soon as kind of we got here or the first semester. So as soon as you've settled in, and I know quite a lot of my classmates have had labs already by the end of their our first semester. Um, and a lot of people also started to study um, their thesis in summer. Um, there are some research groups that pay for a summer internship, for example. Mm, yeah. And I think summer internships are also mandatory for some other courses. Um, mm -hmm. And so that is something that you can look into. And then from your internship, it can then be developed into a thesis. Uh, but uh, the thesis can be anywhere between 30 to 40 credits. It's 40 credits in mine. How many? It's 30. 
It's 34 months. Yeah, it's 30 in the thesis itself, but there are some additional things like seminars and stuff like that, which are tap, uh, 10 credits on top of that. So it's 40 in total. Cool. So yes, the master's thesis is basically a research project in which you then write a thesis about it later on. Um, and it really depends on kind of the program and things can start really early. But I think in a majority of the programs, your second year is dedicated to your thesis and which you have kind of the whole time to do your thesis. Uh, again, uh, it's not like you need to do it 24 <laughs> 7 um because 30 credits is roughly around oh my maths mm. 600 something one semester, uh, yeah one semester yeah. yeah so uh again the way it's divided here is that the recommended amount of credits that you do per period is 15 credits and then 30 credits a semester so it's not like you have to take the whole year to do that but it is nice to kind of take your time because maybe f um, for others your data might not be collected in time or your data might take extra time to be collected or things might not work out or for example I had to change my thesis topic kind of mid-semester um, mm. I started in before August but then I had <laughs> to change it in October <laughs> uh, <laughs> nightmare but uh, it worked out fine yeah, yeah, in the end and so there's always those little things. But again, the most important thing is that you communicate it with your supervisor. But the master's thesis is, um, I think, fun because I like doing research. I'm hopefully planning to continue to do a PhD here at Utu. Um, so for me, that's personally a really fun part. But maybe for others, it might not be. I don't know. What were, mm. What's your experience with research? And um, since you're in first year, have you had any preparation at all for your master's thesis? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I choose to think about my thesis in my second year. Yes. So mm. I feel like I already have enough on my plate. I'm not ready for that chapter of my life yet. So, no. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's technically the same, though I am one of the people who likes to think ahead. <laughs> and uh, I still. I think I asked uh, one of the teachers at the university in September, like during the first week, whether when we actually get our topics, when is the time we work on our thesis, and he just told me that, yeah, you don't have to think about it right now. Uh, the thesis is the work for the second year, and technically that's it, because in my program, for example, uh, the first year is technically uh, devoted to courses, and uh, if you follow the study plan, then you would only have one course in your second year, and uh, the rest will be, would be just thesis. And of course, you can take other courses if you decide, because I will take Finnish courses, for example. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, as uh, Hilia said it before, it differs from program to program, because for example, my friends from East Asian Studies, they um, started working on their thesis, actually working from the first uh, period of uh, autumn semester, so technically from the very beginning, yeah, because they have some kind of thing where they have to actually, as far if I understood it correctly, I, I might be wrong, but uh, as they told me, they have a thing that they have to submit like their progress in their thesis every semester, I think, or every period. So there is also some kind of um, monitoring of their progress, and it's kind of like, yeah, it's also evaluated as far as I understand. But yeah, uh, for me, it's just second year. But I know that and I have a friend from human neuroscience program, the first year student who also started her working on her thesis right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it differs. <laughs> OK, so we have one more question from the chat. Ooh. How does Finnish language sound to you? Any metaphors or parallels? OK, so for me, you know, when I saw that I got admitted to University of Thruku, I was so excited, you know, I'm going to learn a new language. So I picked up a Duolingo app oh. and then <laughs> I started trying to learn Finnish language. I think the only word I succeeded in learning before coming over was kitos. <laughs> well, it's, it's really important. So. <laughs> yeah, but I kept hearing that, you know, the app wouldn't really help me with the mm. language. So I gave up about two weeks into <laughs> doing that. And then when I came over to Finland and I heard people speaking Finnish, yeah, it sounded different from, you know, the normal language that I'm used to. <laughs> but it's, 
I won't say it's easy to learn, but it's not so difficult. And I'm saying that based on the fact that I personally don't even enjoy learning new languages. Mm. And I already know some, you know, few phrases <laughs> like Kitos. <laughs> 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 so what about you guys? Yeah. Uh, well, I also started off with Duolingo and that helped me a bit with the vocabulary. Mm. It's like it doesn't really help you with the day to day tasks. And that's where I found uh, it helpful to actually do a Finnish course in the first semester. Um, can I just say before I continue, it smells amazing in here <laughs> and I wish you guys were here, but I hope you are also baking it at home. Yeah, yeah uh, so we'll get to experience that as well. It smells so good. Anyway, um, so I think I'm proud of myself that I can communicate slightly, like if I really need to, but most of the time I don't need to. Like I can, if I get into a taxi, I can tell them where I need to go or ask for directions, for example. Although I'm not really good with remembering kind of left and right and straight directions. Um, so I actually had an uh, older man uh, visit our lab and he was asking for directions to the hospital because our lab is kind of like next to the hospital. And I was trying to figure out the words of how to say that you kind of go left and then straight. Um, and so I just pointed. <laughs> but the, the that works. Language. Exactly, that works. But I think he also spoke English. So I just said it in English wh- while pointing in hopes to maybe he caught some phrases. But but uh, but I could understand that he was asking for directions at mm. least. So that was something that I was quite proud of. Uh, but yeah, I, I would need to study it a bit more. But you have studied it a lot more, I think. Yeah, so Yeah, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would say that I know I like the way it sounds. Uh, uh-huh. I don't have languages that I really don't like the way they sound. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but Finnish, uh, in my opinion, I think it can be dif- very different from person to person and also from one context to another one because there are more formal situations. There are, for example, lectures or I haven't been to a lecture, but I assume that the pace would be much slower than the uh, language you can f- meet like in just usual day-to-day environment is. So yes, I think yeah, the speed, the words might differ because yes, also the fact that Finnish language is quite, the one that is spoken is quite different from the one that is written. That's quite the challenge sometimes, but it's also manageable. So yeah, I, I would say that if I really try, I can understand some things sometimes. I mean, just, that I pick up from from uh, other people, other people's communication. But uh, yeah, in general, I'm I'm trying to read a book now because I'm in a book club for people who are learning Finnish. So I'm reading a book in Finnish, and I'm also I also had an interview in Finnish. So uh, and I managed to get the part-time job after that interview. So. Uh, I think, yeah, it's manageable and it's a really nice language. I would say that it's kind of like mathematics <laughs> because you need to, <laughs> yeah, you need to combine words and remember how the gr- grammar works, uh, yeah, which is quite true. difficult, but it's it's not too difficult. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, plus, minus, something, change, something, divide by two or something. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting and uh, fascinating, I would say. But yeah, don't don't be too afraid of it. You've learned language once as a baby. The human mind is amazing. What yes. you can pick up subconsciously, uh, you just being exposed here. I worked in um, the university for a little bit, and all of my I think I was the only international there, and all of my colleagues were Finns, and so they would be speaking in Finnish. And you pick up a couple of things to the point that I can trick them sometimes and think, and they think that I understand when I only don't really, but I react accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, so don't worry too much about it. I guess it, again, as you said, it depends on your background. I know some people are like, oh, Finnish is the hardest thing to learn. Um, But also if you have a language that has also cases, for example, like um, verb cases, I meant. So the types of verbs, the Mm. different types of verbs, that's something that's kind of hard to learn in Finnish. Mm. Uh, But I also learned a little bit of Arabic. And so that concept wasn't entirely foreign to me. Mm. So again, it does depend on your background. But Yeah. 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 They're almost done. Just, I think, one or two minutes and we'll put them here and uh, show them to you. Probably not immediately because (laughs) they might be too hot for that. But yeah, just another couple of minutes and I think it's good and we're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to say I know more than Kitas. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I did particularly learn how to say I love you. I'm not sure if it's still very correct, but Try like Mino, Min, Mina, Rakastan, Sinoa. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yay! 
<laughs> so trust me, you can learn the language. It's doable. Yeah. 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 It's definitely not something you need to stress about because uh, I ran uh, into the store just two hours before, one hour before, and uh, I asked a random person if they speak uh, English, and they said yes <laughs> a little bit, so it was fine. Yeah. 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 So it, you'll get away with English. But of course, it's nice to learn the language in, of the country you're in. You also have Google opinion. Translate, so yes. you'll be fine with I that. I tried it, though. I, I mean, it works okay. So I was on a phone call mm. with the hospital trying to rearrange like a doctor's mm. appointment. And uh, the first thing I asked was, <laughs> which is, do you speak English? Yeah. Um, but she was just like, A, no. Um, <laughs> there you go. See, you, you never know what you know. Um, ooh, those look amazing. Anyway, uh, and so I was trying to explain that I have this appointment at this date, but I can't. Can you please change it? And then I like just put her what she was saying to the speaker on Google Translate <laughs> and yeah, I got yeah. roughly tried to roughly tra like mm. uh, explain what uh, this is the suitable date for me anyway yeah. but it works a bit it, it took a, a while but mm. okay. I, I did manage to change in the end okay but yes oh okay I'll try to show one but yeah it's fine my, my fingers are not burning <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> yeah. so yeah but so how long were they in there for well I I think it took a bit longer this time, so maybe closer from 15 to 20 minutes. But yeah, it just differs from from oven to oven. So yeah, I, it, it also differs how big they are. Or also that yeah, because in, in, at home it's usually around 15. Yeah, yeah. But also a good thing with the buns is that when you cut them, you can actually freeze them and then just bake them whenever time whenever you want. And uh, also another thing, they're v completely vegan. So if you follow a vegan diet or yeah, you don't, yes. So if you follow a vegan diet, you can also have them. But of course, if you want to give uh, add something fancy, like brush them with an egg or something, you can do that or sprinkle them with sugar, like with this pearl sugar, I think, or what oh. is it called, yeah, yeah. to give it like an extra chic. So yeah, it's, it's all of that is possible. You can experiment even more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. I mean, I'm used to eating hot foods, so I don't mind trying okay, one now. I can, I can, I can, yeah, I can just cut it carefully. Maybe, yeah, if you, if you blow on it, it should be okay. better. Yeah. Right. So before we wrap this up, ooh, <laughs> um, for those of you who would like to talk to us a little bit more or maybe talk to other ambassadors who are yes. in programs that you're interested in, we have a Unibuddy chat. So you can just, um, well, the quickest way is to just Google Uto ambassadors and there you can find the uh, link to our webpage. And then also the link to where you can chat with one of us. You can chat with all three of us, for yes. example. Yes. Or we have uh, plenty of other ambassadors in different programs yes. and also from different nationalities that may be able to help you. Yeah, so go ahead and check that out. Yeah, because uh, bef even before the shooters, you can actually contact one, any one of us or any one of the ambassadors yes. and ask them about whatever you want. Well, m probably not about the admissions or the, your status in the admissions because we just don't know about that. Yeah. But yeah, all the other things you can go to the ambassador's page. And also, by the way, the link to the ambassador's page is uh, below in the description. And also the link to the programs is below in the description. And yeah, you can just contact us and uh, we'll talk with you and have a chat. Yeah. So any questions about student life and life in Finland as a foreigner, for example, yeah. you can feel free to ask us. But yes, can we try these now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Don't burn your mouth. No. I I'm afraid a little bit, to be fair. <laughs> mm. Is it good? Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> so good. Really try this. Mm. I promise you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I I'm satisfied as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining us. We hope that you liked it and maybe you will try these buns as well. And by the way, I will share the recipe later in the student uh, blog post. And uh, we hope that you'll join us for a spring episode in which we will talk more about the culture, like uh, uprot and uh, uh, Sitsit and uh, the overalls and uh, all the other things that you might not have any idea what they, those are about. So, yeah, if you're inter interested, just join us. Okay. Thank all you, right. everyone.
for joining. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.